All right, I have what I believe will be a fun video for you today. This came as a result of a suggestion for one of my viewers, Jim. I believe it was you who made this suggestion. And the idea was, what things can you find in a dollar store that would make inexpensive yet effective fire starters? Sound like fun. Now, I knew there would be a few things there that are obvious, but I found a few things that are, may not be quite so obvious. So that's what we're going to do today. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, a couple of things. First off, the items I'm about to show you, I picked up in our local dollar store. It goes by the name Dollarama. I believe it's a Canadian wide chain. I don't think it's, it runs down through the States or anywhere else. I know that you have Dollar General in the US and there's different dollar stores. I think there's the great Canadian dollar store up here as well. But these things that I purchased, I picked up in Dollarama. So I just put that out there. Point being is that I picked these things up in our dollar store. You may not find them in yours, but then again, you may find things in your dollar store that I can't find in ours. And the whole point is that these things are cheap, inexpensive, and hopefully effective. A couple of these things I've only tried once or twice, but all right, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the other thing is this came as a result of one of my viewers making the suggestion, Jim, I believe I, you deserve the credit for this, who made the suggestion, why don't you go to the dollar store and see what you can find for fire starters. So that's where it came from. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the list of things that I have, starting with the most obvious, working to ones that maybe you haven't even considered using before. We're going to do a few tests on a couple of them just to demonstrate, or at least test how well they work out. So I do have a little cheat sheet here because I wanted to keep the prices just to give an idea of what kind of money I spent on this, and not very much, and that's the whole point of this. Okay, so number one, right off of the top, is this. A lighter, right? Nothing special here. Not a Bic lighter. This is brand name Major. And actually, it's a refillable lighter. I don't know if anybody's ever tried refilling the Bic lighter. People will say, don't buy cheap lighters, buy a Bic lighter. I don't disagree with that. I have a Bic lighter in my pocket. But I've also found these to be effective. They've never failed me when you might think that a cheap lighter will. And this has a benefit that Bic lighters don't. Can you see the extension on the end of it? That allows me to get a flame into such a thing like an alcohol stove or into a tinder bundle just a little bit easier than a Bic lighter will work. So one dollar, that's all I paid for this. Now I know Bics aren't much more than that if they're any more than that. Canadian prices, by the way, I just want to make sure everybody understands that Canadian prices. But one dollar, these were pretty easy. I've got a few of them. Obviously one stole in the package at the very least. All right, uh, now the next thing. This is all obviously something you would think of is matches. Yes, Dollar Store sells matches. Now, not Strike Anywhere matches. They are a safety match, but um, they're cheap. And what did I pay for the matches? $1.50 got me a box of 250 Now, obviously, I didn't bring the whole box out here to show you, but 250 matches, and they also had the smaller packages as well. But I did uh, shell out for the larger box of matches, but I went around looking to see, look for something that I could put those matches in to bring them out. Because, of course, it's one thing to have matches, but if they get wet, they're not of no value, so you've got to have a match case. I found a match case. This was in the sporting goods section. They have such a thing there at the dollar store. It's a plastic match case with a whistle on one end and a compass on the other. Yeah, I don't know that I would trust, especially one that has a bubble floating around. You know it is accurate, though. It is pointing in the right direction, so it's not totally without value. And it has a lanyard if you wanted to sling it around your neck. But what it's all important component of this is the fact that it does have an O-ring seal right there at the lip. And... I put my matches down inside as well as the strikers and uh, just to make sure I have a couple of strikers inside. By the way, strikers are facing away from the match heads so that if they don't get shaken and, you know, the chances are really low of it happening, but it would be my luck to have it happen that we're, would ignite inside of the case, burn out pretty quick, but uh, yeah, just better to reduce the risk anyway. Okay, so that was, well, what did the match case cost me? Because that's relative here as well. The match carrier, $2.50. That's what I paid for the match carrier. So not a bad deal. Buy yourself a big box of matches. And if you have these in your dollar store, pick it up and you drop your matches in. And you've always got a source of matches. As well, I guess, as a whistle and a compass just in case. All right, what else do I have here? Okay, a couple of items here. These were what I call obvious. I buy these on a regular basis because they're so cheap and effective. And these are waxed impregnated wood fibers 
fire starters. And you can see there are squares. In fact, uh, the package had, uh, where is this one? The waxwood, 12 of these individual squares. I think there was, well, it would have been three of these slabs like this, 12 of them, dollar and a quarter. Hard to beat that. And these are very effective. I use them quite a bit because they're just, they're cheap and they're effective. They do give off a bit of smoke, but, but that's okay if you're lighting a fire with them. I've actually used them and I have a video on using them in replacement for Esbit tabs as a solid fuel tablet. And they can't, they're not quite as intense, but they do work and they burn a long time. And you can, well, you can break them open like this, break one off like this, and you can actually, you see how the ends exposed on that? They light up very easy. Yes, they'll light up with a ferrocerium rod, but you can split them and break them apart. And uh, yeah, you don't have to use a whole one of those if you don't want to for lighting your fire. So they actually had two types at the dollar store. The other type was in a package, there was a whole sheet of them, and you get a longer piece like this, but it's still the same basic concept, wax impregnated wood fibers, they're effective. Now, I don't know that I would want to let these get wet, so you're going to want to put them in something like a, a, a Ziploc bag to make sure they're dry. Uh, I've never actually tried to see how waterproof they are, I mean, it's, the wax would be, but the wood fibers, maybe not so much. See how easy that is to pry open and light like that? And then you can just shove it into your tinder bundle. All right, next thing I found were candles. I mean, obvious, but maybe not so much at the same time. So how do candles work as fire starters? Because of course you're gonna to have to light them up. So I have two types of candles, the traditional cylindrical candles, I'll give you the price in a second, and the little tea lights. Now I should say, if you go into a thrift store, you can usually buy packages of candles that are very, very cheap as well. But again, this is a dollar store video. So the whole point with these is they give you an extended flame for use with marginal materials. You don't have maybe the birch bark like I have so available to me, or fat wood that a lot of people have available to them, and maybe it's a little damp like the stuff I picked up off of the ground today is. Well, a candle is a way of getting an extended flame longer than a match would be to get that marginal material going. Now, the way you would use a candle like this, of course, is to light it up, and that could be the subject of a whole video in and of itself. You would put this in gently underneath your tinder bundle, and when you know that the tinder bundle has lit, then you can withdraw this, blow it out, and you've got your candle for use another day. Now candles also have the other values, obviously lighting, so you could use this for illumination in the evening time. But on top of that, you can also, they are made of wax, so they're great for uh, waterproofing steel blades. If you want to keep them from rusting, uh, they will actually act as a lubricant on zippers. I found all kinds, now waterproofing certain things, man, will take a lot of work, but you could do that as well. So candles can be multi-use for sure, but uh, like I said, there's a video you can have, we could make a whole video on how to use a candle to light a fire. The other one is this, and this is a tea light. Now, now, it's a different kind of it's uh, wax inside of the tea light, but nonetheless, it's very effective. Now, the difference being is I see this as a one-use item. So you're going to light it, you're going to set it down, you're going to carefully put your tinder bundle on top of it so you don't uh, put the flame out, and this is going to burn for an extended period of time. Now, the only downside for this, and maybe it isn't to you, is that they come in these little tiny aluminum shells. Now, usually, I tried to knock this one out, and uh, yeah... Well, if I work at it, I can get it out, but um, you don't have to. The point being is that when your fire is all said and done, you don't want to leave this behind in the wood, so pick the aluminum thing up, unless you can get it out, and then you don't have to worry about that. The aluminum things, by the way, can be useful. I've actually heated water, I won't say boiled, because it didn't last that long, but you can get about not quite an ounce of fuel inside one of these little things and use that as a tiny ultralight alcohol stove. Not a recommendation, just it's something that you could do with them. So, candles. Maybe not obvious to some, but certainly a place in all of our backpacks is to have something like this that you can use. And what did I pay for these things? The tea lights, I got a package of 32 for $3.50. And the regular candles, I didn't write them down what I pay for. It wasn't very much at all. No, I didn't write it down, but it was something like... Um, $2 for six of these candles. So again, very, very inexpensive. I'll, I'll see if that I can't put the price in the video description below, but you know, regardless, you pay $2 or $2.50 for six candles, you're doing pretty good. So candles, yeah, that one works out pretty good. Um, now, here's one I did not expect to see in the dollar store. And when I went back, they were out of them. And you can understand why. 
packages of fatwood. And I said, no way, this can't be real fatwood. Sure is. Yep, that's real fatwood for sure. Four sticks of fatwood. I believe they were $2 for the four sticks in this package. And uh, yeah, if you can find that. Now, the reason I'm mentioning fatwood is, yes, it's something you can find in nature. If you know where to look for it and you're in an area where it's easily obtainable. Some areas aren't. Like, it's not easy to find fat wood here. I do find it. I find the occasional stump that I can uh, dig up and, and get the fat wood out of it. But not like in other places. People have uh, told me how much easier it is to find fat wood. So if you're not able to find fat wood in your woods, maybe you can find at least some of this at your dollar store that you can put in your bag. Um, I did find that some people aren't sure what it is when they find fat wood. Is it actually fat wood or not? Well, the easiest way, of course, is to put a match to it to see if it, how it lights up. But the smell, and this has all the smell of fat wood. When you scrape it, you get that turpentine, piney kind of smell from it, like it comes from nothing else. So it's not bad. If you can find these, put them in your bag, and you've got fat wood, you know, four sticks of fat wood like that will actually last somebody a long time. They say you can stay, make two fires with this. You know, I can make 20, 30, 40 fires because, of course, I'm not relying just on the fat wood. That's just for getting things going. Okay, what else? Um, here's one. Right? Hand sanitizer. This is the gel type of hand sanitizer. I use this quite often with wood pellets and stoves, so it works well for that. It'll work well on other materials as well. Um, you do have to light it fairly quickly. You have to be a little cautious because, of course, it's an invisible flame, but you'll know once you get it lit. So it has the use, of course, if you do have to go to the washroom out here and you need to clean your hands, then you've got your uh, gel alcohol or hand sanitizer for doing that. Just make sure it's a high percentage of alcohol in it. Some of it doesn't have this 99.99% or 90% isopropyl alcohol. Anyway, a good high percentage of alcohol in this one, so I like this, and uh, I found also they have huge pump ones as well in the dollar store. In fact, I bought one of the larger pump ones for refilling smaller bottles like that. So, uh, gel alcohol, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, now we're getting into some interesting, maybe less obvious at the dollar store. What the, oh, what did the uh, hand sanitizer cost? I don't have a price for that one either. I'm not doing well here for prices. So this was an easy one. Petroleum jelly, otherwise known as Vaseline. This is not Vaseline brand. iPharma is the brand here. 100 grams, three and a half ounces of petroleum jelly. What did I pay for the petroleum jelly? $1.50, all right, so that's pretty cheap. Again, it has multiple uses, cuts, scrapes, burns, anything that you need to put a little jelly on, you know, is great. Uh, Adds a little bit of waterproofing, great to put on leather, like your boots or, or a sheath or something like that. So it has multiple uses. But for a fire starter, it is almost unparalleled. So how are you going to use petroleum jelly for a fire starter? Well, something else I found at the dollar store. Makeup pads. So I've got a small, I didn't bring, bring the whole bag out. I will we'll actually make one in, in a second and light it up. You can make makeup pads or cotton balls, either one. I like makeup pads, they're just a little easier sometimes. While you're at it, you got to know when you put petroleum jelly on these, they get messy, very, very messy. Stop by the other aisle where they're selling little Ziploc bags so that you can put them in because once you get them all gooped up with the petroleum jelly, you're going to want to keep them in something. And if you haven't done this yet, they get really liquidy almost when it gets hot, especially if you're putting them in your pocket or it's hot outdoors. So buy yourself something or find Find something at home that you can put your homemade petroleum jelly fire starters in. And that's what we'll do in a minute. I'll, I'll make one to, and we'll just show how easy these things light up. All right, so one more thing I found at the dollar store. And when I looked at this, uh, I really questioned whether or not this was going to be something that would work. But I had a viewer suggest this one on top of everything else, Mickey Barton. Mickey Barton suggests, what about sparklers, like birthday cake sparklers, will they work as a, a fire starter? Well, $1.50, that's all I paid for this package of 18 fire not, uh, sparklers, and uh, we're going to see whether or not we can light a fire with a sparkler. I think probably it'll be work. 
um, it, you've got to wonder, does it make a lot of sense? Because you usually have to apply a flame directly to the fire starter to get it going. And uh, then why wouldn't you just apply the same flame to your tinder bundle? Well, same thing again. Maybe your tinder bundle is less than ideal, slightly damp. Uh, you know, this will give you, it's like an extended match is the best way to say it. So quick like this with your lighter. Um, actually, I just got one lit a minute ago. I didn't, wasn't sure I could with a ferrocerium rod. Honestly, I'll try it and show you that you can do it with a ferrocerium rod, but it took a lot of sparks. It wasn't as easy a thing to light as I thought it would be with a ferrocerium rod. I did take one apart and kind of crumble it into little bits and, and like that. That was easier to light, but it it was too easy to lose. I wanted to use it while it's still on the little thin piece of metal that it's on. Okay, those are what I found at the dollar store. Uh, we're going to set up and do two demonstrations, one with the makeup pad and petroleum jelly and another one with the sparklers. All right, we're going to start with the uh, petroleum jelly on a makeup pad. So I have a single makeup pad here. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen these things before. They pull apart. They're just, co they're cotton balls, but just in a flat surface. So they make great fire starters. Now, uh, there's no special magic to this. There's no formula, no necessarily any amounts. Um, you can see what I've, actually it's probably more than I need for this. You see what I've done there? Kind of put a gob of it in there. It can be a bit messy to work with, to say the least. Um, a lot of people like to rub them in. I will say don't oversaturate it because then you won't have any fibers like this that you need to catch the spark. So you can see all I've done. So you can make any number of these up, put them away in your plastic bag and you're good to go. So we'll just put that down. I'll throw a spark on it. As I said, they can be messy. At least it's good for your skin, right? All right, where's my ferrocerium rod? Usually you can throw a spark from a distance as if it hits it, it's probably going to light it. I need to be a little bit closer here so I can hit it accurately. And there you go. All right, so that will burn for quite an extended time. So you can throw a spark on that, put it underneath your uh, tinder bundle, and that's just going to burn and burn and burn and burn. Uh, not a bad fire starter at all. It's a classic. Most people have heard something like that. So, yeah, it's not even. All right, all right there we go. Got it out. I just didn't want to wait for it to be finished. Put that aside. Okay. Now, the other thing was the tin or the sparkler. So, Let's get a sparkler out. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to... I may light this with a, a lighter, but I will try it at least at first with the ferrocerium rod. I really don't have good luck with it, but... Am I still in frame with that? Yep, okay. Maybe I can bring the camera down just a tiny bit more. All right, so once I get this lit, either with a ferrocerium rod or with my lighter, I'm just, these are just a little bundle of twig branches off the end of a dead spruce tree. Um, they're a little bendy, they could be drier, but that's the whole point is to see whether or not I can uh, get them lit with this thing. All right, now, last time I did this, I had to do a lot of showering. I also did this, which is to scrape down slowly and try to build a little pile of uh, spar what do you call them? Scrapings off of the ferrocerium rod. Obviously. Now All right, it's, there you can see, it's not an easy thing to do with a ferrocerium rod. So I am going to, I have done it. You could, you can, it can be done, but we're actually just going to move to the cigarette lighter, the Bic lighter in this case. And maybe better quality ones would do a better job. Uh, 
Oh, took a minute. Gives you an idea just uh, how damp those were. But there we go. We have smoke, we have flame. Just as the sparkler runs out. So the sparkler's out and the fire is going. So they will work as fire starters. All right, let's wrap this video up. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did in making it. It was quite fun going into my local dollar store, the Dollarama, taking a look around to see what I could find to use as fire starters. I was a little surprised with some of the things that I found there, and I know I didn't exhaust the list of all the things I could have picked up and used as fire starters, but the point of this video was is to show you that you can go and buy things very inexpensively, dollar store, drugstore, just about anywhere, and build an effective fire kit without spending a whole lot of money. Now, you may not be able to buy some of the things that I found in my dollar store, but you may be able to find things in your dollar store that work better than the ones that I found, or at least, you know, ones that I hadn't even considered at this point. And in fact, that's what I'm going to ask of you. If you have any other very inexpensive dollar store type things, they don't have to be from the dollar store, but things like that, that you can make fire starters, then please put those in the comments section so we can all benefit from your suggestions. Uh, if you have any other videos like this one you'd like me to try out in the woods here, then by all means put that in the comments section below. I think my favorite of all the things that I showed you so far was obviously the Vaseline and uh, makeup pads. I've used those a lot. They're, you know, I usually have some of those in my fire kit anyway, so that's, that is almost a given. I think everybody should develop that one and just make sure you keep them in something that won't leak uh, when, when, when the weather gets hot. The sparkler was a fun thing. I don't know how practical it is, but it does work. And I think that was the whole point. You can use sparklers for lighting fires. You just have to prep everything up properly. But what else? What else could we use that's cheap and, and inexpensive and things that you can find commercially available to all of us that for lighting fires with? Why don't you put it in the comments section? But until next time, Get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.